seminar. This is Mr. Muller and in today's lesson we're going to talk about how we can read arguments. Now if you've looked at our AP seminar glossary you would have noticed that the definition of an argument is a claim or a thesis. A claim or a thesis is basically a statement giving a perspective on a topic that's using evidence and reasons to back that up. So again an argument is a claim or a thesis that conveys a perspective, a viewpoint, developed through a line of reasoning and supported by evidence. I believe that uh, every red light should have a camera on it to catch people who speed because it will increase uh, money in towns for fines, it will deter people from breaking the law and running red lights, it will cause less accidents and fatalities. But now I need evidence to back that up. I need statistics, I need examples where that's worked before, I need testimony from experts, I need surveys, I need interviews. But the question is, when we're looking at an argument, how do we really break it down? How can we look at a piece of text, or a video, or a poem, or a political cartoon, and really try to understand the argument the author is making? Well, that's what this video is about. Hope you're excited. I'm very excited. Let's get started. Now, First thing we have to talk about is this idea of controversy. Uh, honestly, you've been told a lie most of your life because a lot of things that you see in, in sports or in TV, especially with politics, it's an either or situation. Either this or this about this topic. Either global warming exists or it doesn't exist. Either the death penalty is good or it's bad. Well, it, arguments really aren't that simple. There are multiple perspectives. And again, a lot of times we see in the media there's this idea of pro or con, but honestly, there really is a range of different perspectives on the issue. So let's take the death penalty for instance. It's not as simple as, as the death penalty should be used in prisons or the death penalty shouldn't. Well, when should it be used? How it should be used? For what crime should it be used for? Uh, uh, what if someone has been in prison for a long time. Should we just let them have life? Is there a date where we should stop it and end it? What if people are on death row? Should we use the death penalty for them? And should new prisoners not get? There are so many different perspectives on these issues. And so really don't try to simplify some of these big topics into one or the other. There are multiple positions on either side of the fence here. Now, again, let's say you got a, I give you a poem about war. Or I show you a video of a soldier either upholding what he did in a war or criticizing what he did in a war. What if I give you a book like All Quiet on the Western Front about World War I? What if I give you a peer-reviewed journal about PTSD? How are you going to read that to break down the author's main points and really understand what their argument is, understand what their claim is, understand the reasons that they're using, understand the evidence that they're providing. Well, here's a bit of a step-by-step -step process, and I know some of us aren't really formulaic people, and that's fine, but some of us really like to follow patterns. I myself am the pattern person, and so here's a structured way on how to read these arguments. Now, if you want to have a little bit of, of leeway in what you do, that's okay. But start off with this process because this is probably something new to all of us. The first thing you're going to do is at, when you're looking at a controversial issue, and that could be everything from climate change to extremism, just ask these questions before you even start reading that peer review journal or watching that video or reading that poem or reading that book. First, where did this first appear? If I'm going to be talking about religious freedom, and I'm going to make a argument that people should be able to uphold values of a particular religion in a country because it's the dominant religion. Well, if I'm going to be reading that from the American South, I know there might be a little bit of bias in there. I know that author may be influenced by the cultural values and norms of that area. Also, take a look at who wrote this argument. Do they have a PhD? What do they have a PhD in? Are they respected in their field? What have they written? If they've written a lot of books about, let's say, how bad the death penalty is, and then you're reading a peer-reviewed journal about the death penalty from the same person, 
Well, you got to keep that in mind that maybe this person doesn't look at both perspectives. So really try to understand who wrote the argument. Also, look at the title. Title should be something that's engaging. It should give you a, a good sense of what you're about to read. And this is all just to kind of get the lay of the land. We don't want to Leroy Jenkins this situation. For those of you who don't know, Leroy Jenkins is a bit of a video meme. Came around the year 2004, 2005. It was a there was a World of Warcraft game, and then this group was preparing to go into this section of this dungeon, and one character just gets up and runs in there and says, "All right, let's do this, Leroy Jenkins." And it's the idea of running in without looking and making a plan. So the first step is really just to try and make a plan. The second thing you do is now you're going to read the argument, read that text, watch that video, read that poem, read that book, and you're not going to make notes. All you're going to do is read it. I know we, you try to do everything at once, but we're going to take this in sections. Just read it, and when you're done, write one sentence that sums up the argument. What is this about? What is the argument they are making? Now, after you've done like a little one sentence summary, or here's generally what this argument's about. Now you're going to read it two more times. And you're going to take notes now. Now here's some of the things that you have to note as you're reading this argument. First, find the author's thesis. That's basically their perspective on the issue using reasoning and evidence to try to prove it. What is, what, what is the, the crux of their argument? What are they going to try and prove? Do the sentence that you wrote, did the sentence that you wrote down the first time you read it, or you wrote that one sentence summary, does it actually match the author's thesis? If it doesn't, you might want to go and read that again because you've been missing something. So after you've confirmed that your one sentence summary matches the thesis fairly well, now start looking for, well, what are the reasons and the evidence the author is using to support that thesis? Let's look at red light cameras. If his thesis is red light cameras should be used on all red lights, for safety and for monetary value. He's going to talk about different reasons. Fatalities would be down, prevent accidents, it would develop, uh, give more money to towns. Now he has to use the evidence. What are the statistics? What do the experts say? Where has this worked? How has this been debated? Also think about who is the intended argument for? And we have a little typo there. There's always about one in there. So I'm just going to write four in here. So. Think about the audience that author is writing to. What perspectives do they have? What knowledge is the author assuming that they have? What is the author missing? Because let's say you know nothing about red light cameras and he just jumps in and assumes you know all this, all about red light cameras, he's using technical jargon. Well, you, you gotta back up. Maybe do a little bit more background to really understand what the author's saying. Is there bias in their position? Depends on who they're writing for, depends if this is a peer-reviewed entry or a journal entry. Uh, is this a blog? Is this for a magazine? Where's some bias in there? Where the facts come from? Do they cite their sources? Are their sources reputable? Are they using statistics that are up to date and current instead of old? Are the sources reliable? Oh man, I got tons of sources. It's all from Yahoo Answers or it's all from um, wiki answers or it's from a random blog I found of some people commenting on a post and I have no idea who they are, what their credentials are, and they're probably just speaking what someone else said to them. Are the sources reliable? And another really important thing, does the writer acknowledge other views? If he's only talking or she is only talking about one perspective of this argument and they're not giving any credit to the counter arguments because most arguments are valid. You have to recognize the opposition of your argument to really lend credibility to what you're seeing, saying to get your reader to trust you. Are they acknowledging those other views? Fourth thing you do. So we've read it once, summary, two more times we've taken notes. We've already gotten the layout of the land so we don't leave Roy Jenkins the situation. Now you're going to annotate the actual paper itself. Now annotations are all this writing on top of the paper because all we've done is mark things on the side. Now we're going to actually write all over this. So we're going to underline, highlight, circle main key points and concepts. And the reason why we're doing this is so that when we look at this argument we can find these things much easier than having a blank page and I'm trying to find it frantically. Connect it with your experience. One thing I tell my students, especially when I taught US history and we're looking at 
um, different events and different documents is I say, compared to what you experience, what parallels do you see there? Or what parallels do you see in things that we had already learned about in the past? Think about connecting passages as well. Have you read anything else that this paper reminds you of or something that disagrees with it? And it's also that you can get a great sense of this argument and where it is in the whole of academia. And also ask questions. One thing that I do with my flip videos, and I did this with in, in uh, past years with my history classes, is I said, as you're watching these videos and taking notes, if you have a question about a historical period or a person, write it down and then try to find the answer. Because what that does is that allows you to go deeper, you have deeper knowledge, you can make more connections. It also inspires and motivates you. Now, after you've done all that, so you've got a one sentence summary, you've got notes on, on their thesis and their reasons and evidence and buy it and all this stuff, and then you've marked up the paper. Now what you're going to do to really understand the argument is find other sources about that topic. Red light cameras, global warming, the death penalty, um, saving the whales. And you're going to draw a map that represents different views so you can really get a holistic idea of how people argue about this. So let me give you an example here. Uh, let's talk about sustainable agriculture. This idea that we should have um, farming that's grown locally, that we're not using Monsanto seeds, that, that can't be really reproduced. So here are all the arguments about sustainable culture. Eating food that's grown locally reduces the amount of oil. We should change to a diet that has less impact on the environment. Planting rooftop and community gardens will lead to greater agricultural sustainability. Farmers should use agricultural practices that require less water. Government should impose penalties with ecotoxins and provide incentives to encourage agricultural sustainability. So the, uh, the question here was, what's the most effective way to have sustainable agriculture? What's the most important thing that we need to do to make sure we have sustainable agriculture? One says, use less oil. One says, we need to change your diets. One says, rooftop gardens. One says, use practices that require less water. One says, impose penalties that aren't using sustainable agriculture. Are all of them valid? Yes. Do all of them probably have reasons and evidence to back it up? Yes. Now, looking at all those sources, you get a, a holistic perspective of that topic. Now, if, let's say you are writing a research paper on sustainable agriculture. Your goal is to find the best option. And that's a map. Now, when we're looking at these arguments, something else you have to keep in mind are something called fallacies. Basically, things that the author is doing in the argument that destroys their credibility. Now, the thing we have to think about is, as we're reading an argument, our goal is not to destroy the author. Because most likely, especially if it's peer-reviewed, it, it has some valid points. And we have to acknowledge that. We have to take that into account. So we shouldn't read it just trying to destroy it. But we do have to recognize when it might be, when their arguments might be off. So let's talk about some of these fallacies. I'm going to go through each, give it an example very quickly. Uh, we will go through all of them. So just take some notes on the side here. First, we're looking at logical fallacies. That's, that's fallacies of, of logic, of, of trying to reason. We're going to be begging the question. So begging the question could be an example like, politicians are inherently dishonest because no honest person would run for public office. So, what are you talking about? Politicians are dishonest because no one honest would run. Where is that coming from? You can't prove that. Um, an either or situation of either we, either we eliminate the regulation of businesses or else profits will suffer. It's, a, it's either we do this or this horrible thing happens. Well, that's not really the case. You're not really looking at it holistically because it's too simple. A false analogy. Uh, Japan surrendered in 1945 when the U.S. dropped nuclear bombs on them. So we should use nuclear bombs now. Well, we don't understand the, didn't understand the context of what would have happened in 1945. We didn't understand the environmental implications. Atomic weapons are much more powerful now. It's a false analogy. You're, you're using an outdated example that doesn't really work anymore. Uh, hasty generalization. We've had drought in this town for three years. Global warming must be real. Okay, but have we done enough studies? Do you really understand global warming? It's, it's a logical fallacy. What about non sequitur? Hey, my university made a billion dollars this year. They should lower tuition. Well, 
you're not really understanding all the intricacies of how a university runs. You don't know what they're, all they're funding. You're making two arguments that aren't necessarily related. What about oversimplification? Hey, no one will run red lights if we just use the death penalty on anyone who does. Well, that's not really, that can't happen. So why make that, that argument? Uh, post hoc fallacy. Hey, the stock market goes down when this football team loses its games. Okay, you're, you're trying to make one thing lead to another that probably doesn't work. You're trying to make a causal argument that really doesn't make any sense. What about rationalization? Hey, hey, you know what? I could have finished my college paper if my printer was working. No, you could have finished your paper if you did it on time, made a plan, followed your strategies, did the research, and didn't leave it to the last minute. Making your paper being done all about printer ink doesn't really make sense. That rationalization isn't strong. Or what about a slippery slope? Uh, so for instance, we shouldn't grant citizenship to illegal immigrants now living in the United States because no one will want to obey our laws. Well, the problem with that is if one thing inevitably will cause something else to happen, how do you prove that? A lot of times you can't. So those are logical fallacies. What about emotional fallacies? These are things that appeal to our emotions, to our mental capacity. What about bandwagon appeal? Um, hey, it doesn't matter if I copy off the web, if I plagiarize off the web, everyone else is doing it. Well, just because everyone else is doing it doesn't necessarily mean it's right. One thing we have to think about is think about how dumb the average person is and realize that half the people in the world are dumber than them. Just because a lot of people think something doesn't mean it's necessarily right. What about name calling? Um, every candidate running for office in this election is either a radical or a right wing ide ide demagogue or something. Well, now you're, you're negatively labeling people and you're not using any facts for it. You're also putting them in one or two categories. Honestly, if, if you're devaluing someone as a person, you're really not making a strong argument. What about polarization? Um, feminists all hate men. Really? All of them? All people who are Chechnyan or terrorist. Really? All? Seriously? You do this in relationships. You never listen to me. Really? Never? Because I'm listening to you right now. What about the idea of a straw man? Straw man would be an example like, uh, environmentalists won't be satisfied until not a single human being is allowed to enter a park. It's a diversionary tactic that sets up another position in a way that can be easily rejected. It's an emotional fallacy. And these are things we have to watch out for as we're reading because if we can find these and identify these, we might be able to say, you know what? That argument has some issues with it and we have to acknowledge that to see if an argument is really good. So, how do we summarize these arguments? How do we holistically after we've done all this, if, if I ask you for a summary, okay, what's their argument, identify their thesis, what's their reasoning, what's their evidence? If, if I'm asking you to formally do a summary for me, the first thing you gotta do is cite the source. So give me the name, title of the argument, and the main point. Then tell me what the key ideas are. What are they trying to say? And use quotes, please. It gives a lot of credibility saying, well, he's saying that red light cameras would be good because it would reduce accidents. Put in a quote. It, be without judgment. Don't try to just destroy what they're saying. Try to be open-minded, even if you think they're dead wrong. It doesn't matter if you think they're wrong. Your goal is to summarize what they're writing about. What you think does not matter. Also, don't have it and be any longer than 150 words. You're just trying to get a summary of this argument. Now, what will this do? Let's say you're trying to do a research paper and you've got 50 books or 50 different pieces of documentation that you're going to use. If you go through this process with all of them, it'll be much easier to figure out what are the sources you really want to use here. <sighs> so let me show you an example. So this is an example of a summary. You see our citation up here, and here's our summary. As you can see, it's pretty short, but the idea is so that you can just get a sense of all these sources and what they're saying so that you can use them in a presentation, in a pitch, in a proposal, paper, in any sort of argumentative writing or presentation. Well, that finishes our video on reading arguments. Hope you learned something you didn't know before. Thanks for watching.